Dear friends and happy Sunday. Today we are gathered to celebrate the day of the Lord. It's God's gift to us. Unfortunately, we will be celebrating from our homes and from our places of comfort. But as always, our God unites us in ways we could never imagine. And so wherever you are and participating at this Mass, my prayers are for you, for your families, and for people you care about. This Mass is going to be dedicated to all of you. But I also want to pray in this Mass for people who clean our streets, clear our trash. They're, they take so much risks doing this. For our grocery store workers, they are the people we never remember often. I like to also pray for them and pray for their families that God may bless them for what they do, keeping our society running, making it possible for us to even eat we pray that God may reward them, protect them, and keep them safe. As we pray for our doctors, our healthcare workers, nurses, everyone who is on the front lines of this battle. We pray for our EMS workers. We pray for our police, our fire, fire service people. May God bless every one of them. They are all incredible human beings who are risking every day for the safety of our society. Um, finally, I also like to pray for young parents um, who are just blessed with their newborn babies. May God bless them and protect them. This morning, our opening hymn will be, Morning Has Broken. Morning Has Broken. Morning has broken. Like the first morning, love bed has spoken. Like the first bird, praise for the singing, praise for the morning, praise for them springing fresh from the Sweet the rains new fall, sun lit from heaven, like the first you fall on the first grass. Praise for the sweetness of the wet garden, strong in completeness, where his feet. In the name of the Father, and of the Father,
of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear friends, today we ask the prayers of our great saint, Padre Pio. We ask his prayers for the healing of our world. We ask his prayers for the healing of your lives and your families and everyone that you are bringing to God this morning. I'll leave us a few moments to bring your private intentions to God and trust that from this altar of God's grace that you would receive in, in return grace for your requests, blessings for your needs, and every good favor to meet every challenge in your life. So we'll take the next few moments to bring our concerns to God. And now to prepare ourselves, dear friends, for this Mass, let us call to mind our sins and ask God's mercy and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my faults, through my faults, through my most grievous faults. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Virgin Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sins, and may he bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us say the Gloria. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord, God heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayers. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of a day of resurrection through our Lord Jesus Christ your Son who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever Amen Our first reading is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles Then Peter stood up with the eleven raised his voice and proclaimed you who are Jews, indeed all of you staying in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to my words. You who are Israelites, hear these words. Jesus the Nazarene was a man commended to you by God with mighty deeds, wonders, and signs which God walked through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This man delivered up by the set plan and foreknowledge of God. You killed using lawless men to crucify him. But God raised him up, releasing him from the truth of death, because it was impossible for him to be held by it. For David says of him, I saw the Lord ever before me, with him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. Therefore, my heart has been glad, and my tongue has exalted. My flesh, too, will dwell in safety, because you have not abandoned my soul to the nether world. 
nor will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the parts of life. You will fill me with the joy of your presence. My brothers, you can confidently say to you about, we can confidently say to you about the patriarch David that he died and was buried. And his tomb is in our midst to this day. But since he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants upon his throne, he foresaw and spoke of the resurrection of Christ, that neither was he abandoned to the nether world, nor did his flesh see corruption. God raised this Jesus. Of these, we are all witnesses. Exalted at the right hand of God, he received the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father and poured him forth as you see and hear. The word of the Lord. Praise. Thanks be to God. Our response to the psalm is Hallelujah. Keep me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, my Lord, are you, O Lord, my allotted portion and my cup. You it is who hold fast, my Lord. Hallelujah. I bless the Lord who consoles me. Even in the night, my heart exalts him. I set the Lord before me. With him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. Hallelujah. Therefore, my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body too abides in confidence because you will not abandon my soul to the nether world, nor will you suffer your faithful one to undergo corruption. Hallelujah. You will show me the path of life, abounding joy in your presence, the delights at your right hand forever. Hallelujah. Our second reading is a reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you invoke as Father him who judges impartially according to each one's works, conduct yourself with reverence during the time of your sojourn, realizing that you were ransomed from your futile conduct, handed on by your ancestors not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a spotless, unblemished lamb. He was known before the foundation of the world, but revealed in the final time for you, who through him, through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Lord Jesus, open the scriptures to us. Make our hearts bond while you speak to us. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus. And they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them. But their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing as you walk along the way? 
They stopped, looking downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, said to him in reply, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place in these days? And he replied to them, What sort of things? They said to him, The things that happened to Jesus in Nazarene, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, how our chief priests and the rulers both handed him to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. Besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described. But him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe all that the prophet spoke! Was it not necessary? that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory. Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged him, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them, and it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us? while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us. So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, happy Sunday to all of you and welcome to this most holy sacrifice of, the, of um, God's love in Christ Jesus. This morning I will reflect with you from, or this afternoon depending on where you are, I'll reflect with you from the gospel reading. I am sure that everyone would be able to find something here to relate with and to relate to in regard to this encounter between these two apostles or these two disciples and the Lord Jesus. But normally to connect and to relate we have to identify a moment in time where we share whatever was going on in the lives of these two persons, these two guys. And I have no doubt that any one of us, every one of us, has had a moment like this in your life. A moment like they had today in your life. And for some of us, it's a moment where we wish we forgot and never had to think about it ever again but there's something we can learn from that moment and so i don't want you to be afraid to go back to that moment and to see what the bible or what the lord is going to say to you about that moment now don't forget these guys most of them had spent three years of their time now three years for even if it's for a child that's a lot of time to lose if it's lost three years for a teenager 
That's a lot of time to lose. Three years for an adult, that's a lot of time. Why? Because you are getting closer. And, and these guys, yeah, they may have been young guys, but they were believing we got a career, we got a life, we got a future. And now that didn't seem like, like, like true anymore. So for them, this was a failed dream. I'm sure you have also had a dream that appeared to be failing or failed. It could be any dream. Maybe your dream job. You went in there and realized things just didn't work. You got fired or you had to leave. And each time you think about it, it just fills you with such anger, with such disappointment, with whoever was responsible for your getting fired or for you, for you having to leave that job. It could be with in-laws that things just didn't work out well. And you, you, you had to work out or they had to work out on you. It could be with a relationship that just didn't work. You invested everything, you gave in everything, and it just didn't work. And maybe you walked away, or he walked away, or she walked away, but somehow that did not work. It could be between parents and children, where you gave in so much, and somehow something did not work out well. It turned out to be something you just didn't, you, you didn't expect, you, did not, you, didn't, you, didn't, you didn't hope will turn out that way, but that was the outcome you got. So, so you could think about any, any number of things. A business you invested in and everything just went down the drain. So think about something, a failed dream in your life. A failed endeavor. And I use the word failed because technically we never fail in every endeavor. Yeah, things may not have worked out well, we didn't fail. We got lessons to improve the future, to get better tomorrow. So the word failed may not be the right word, but I use it for lack of a better word. So a failed dream, a failed vision, a failed relationship, a failed whatever it was. I want to try to capture how that made you feel when that didn't work. Think about how you felt. Maybe you felt like, I just, I can't believe how much I wasted my time in this place. I was used, exploited, abandoned. J just think about everything, how it made you feel angry, frustrated, disgusted. You almost did not want to remember the name of that person who did this to you. Or at least you feel or you felt did this to you. So if you can capture your emotions at that time, it may have been long, far, far long ago, but if you can capture that emotion, then you can relate to what these guys were dealing with right now. How you found it so hard to go back and tell the people who told you, look, don't do this. And you had to make that phone call to hear, but I told you. That's all these guys were also dealing with. So when they decided to leave Jerusalem and go back home, they had all of these things. I'm sure this is what they were talking about. So when Jesus came by them, this is what they were thinking about. Planning on how, you know, trying to get the story right, on how they could make this story make sense in this situation. How they will go and explain this to their parents, or explain this to their friends, and explain this to people who were thinking, are you guys crazy? That's what they were thinking about, trying to figure out all of that. And I know you also went through that when your own vision or your own dream did not go as planned. You had to come up with an explanation first to yourself and then to everyone else who cares to ask you. Now, I believe that these guys were convinced their decision to leave was the right decision. They were so disappointed. They were so upset. You, you, could, you could hear the way they were recounting this, this whole story to Jesus. It says, we thought that he was the one, so we believed in him. We invested, we gave him everything. And he just, he just, he just, he just failed. He just, we just, he just lost it. They killed him, and that was it. So, if you can remember that moment, then you can remember, or you can at least relate to what these guys were dealing with. 
So that's the first thing I want us to focus on. How you handle disappointment. How you handle failed. I use the word again, failed. How you handle things that did not work. Things that don't work. Things that you invest and give everything and you don't get what you expect. How do you handle that? Now, a lot of us believe just dropping and walking away is the best thing, is the right thing to do. Now, there are times where that is the right thing to do. Believe me, there are times where that is the right thing or maybe the only right thing to do. But not every time that just dropping and walking away is the right thing. Sometimes, I know if that is meant for us to do, you might think you're running away and the Lord brings you right back to that same situation because you did not get the lesson. There are times where God puts us in a situation, not because he wants us to stay, but he wants us to get a lesson from there just so we can manage the same situation better at a higher altitude. So it's not every time that we must cut loose and run. There are times where you will stay and learn the lesson just so that you are better off for tomorrow. These guys were cutting and running away. And Jesus said, no, no, you guys are not running away. There's something here for you. There's something in this for you. I know how you feel about this. It feels like it's a lost cause. I lost in this. I am going to pack my things and just go crying around and just mourning and weeping. No. It's not everything that is the way it looks or the way it appears. Not everything that looks or is the way it looks or the way it tastes or the way it smells or the way it appears. So these guys, like most of us, were cutting and losing and running away. Now Jesus wants us to understand that there are times where when things don't work, that's when you stay the course. That's when you stay to get the lesson. Because you didn't get the result you wanted, then get the lesson and be better going forward. But you cannot get the lesson if you feel the way these guys were feeling. Disappointed, used, exploited. No, that only fills you with a lot of anger. When things don't work, the question you want to ask, God, why did you bring me here? Can you just open my eyes to see why this experience had to be me? Can you open my eyes to learn what it is you brought me here to teach me? Can you open my eyes to see what work you brought me here to do in me? That way, we are not angry. We are not mad. Sure, things may not have worked out well, but you realize you prepare yourself. You are in the right frame of mind to move on to something greater and something better because the Lord will always provide opportunity for us if only we get the lessons right. Don't forget, God does not waste resources. So if he brought us to learn and we weren't able to learn, he's not going to give us an opportunity where we didn't get the lessons. Now, this period of this quarantine is a period for us to do a lot of work, to prepare ourselves for whatever God has in store for us. Now, we may waste this time looking and focusing and angry and disgusted and frustrated and discouraged and feeling like these people. And we never really get the time to ask God, God, what do you want me to do at this time to prepare for what is, what, what is ahead for me? That's something I want us to think about during this moment. For however long we will stay in this moment. God, I am embracing this moment. I'm not going to be angry or discouraged or disappointed or complain. Yes, there's a reason why you allow me and everyone else to go through this moment. Open my eyes to see why this moment. This moment isn't just some failed uh, experiment or some failed whatever. This moment can be a life or a career or some opportunity changing moment for you if we can use it as Jesus, the Lord, wants us to do. That's the first thing I want us to reflect on today. And if everyone will reflect on it personally because this is a personal challenge from the Lord Jesus. But these guys were believing that what they were doing was right. Maybe you are believing that feeling angry, being disgusted, being angry, being discouraged, being whatever, it's right. The Lord wanted to reveal to them, no, it wasn't, it's not right. That's not what you should be feeling. You should be looking 
are the opportunities that God is preparing, the, the chances God is giving us to prepare for whatever lies ahead post coronavirus because there will be an end. There is an expiration date for coronavirus. But after that expiration, what becomes of you? What becomes of me? What did we prepare ourselves for that moment? Because that moment will definitely come. The second thing I want us to reflect on. So I'm sure something that almost everyone here can relate to because I can relate to that. There is one in your life, there's a person in your life, maybe one or two or three or four, depending on what your life story is like, who you credit with saving your life, that if you're alive today, if your business is alive, if your marriage is alive, if anything that you value is here today, you credit that thing to this person. That person was your saving angel. Could have been a mentor, could have been anything, a teacher, could have been a coach. But someone, somehow, was responsible for who you are today because they did not allow you fall, fall through that cliff or fall through the cracks. Or somehow, they did not allow you make that very catastrophic decision that you were about to make. You credit someone with that. I do have people in my own life that I credit with the fact that thank God for this person, but for this person, I will be somewhere else. I'll be doing something else. I'll be somehow. God knows. And I know that you have that person too in your life. Now, for these two guys, when they were when the devil started to isolate them, because I don't think this is God's grace or this is the spirit. This was the devil trying to isolate them just so he could turn them around and do with them what he wanted to do. And when the devil started or the enemy started to isolate you and to just keep you apart just so he could use you for whatever he wanted to do, someone was there who stepped up for you, who did not let you stay alone. For these guys, it is the Lord himself. He stepped by them and walked with them. The Bible said he walked with them. I want you today to remember someone who walked with you. Yeah, he saw the messiness. He saw everything that would make everyone else cringe and want to keep, keep a distance. No, that person did not. He wanted to walk with you. And thanks to, to that, that person, you are here today doing what you do today. Today, if it's possible, I want you to write something for who that person is. Write that person. And if they are alive, possibly, just give them a call and let them know how that moment changed your life. Give them some reason to see how God used them for you. Maybe you could also be something like that. They said, when God uses someone to bless you, you be the agent to bless someone else. Maybe tomorrow you could be that. You could, you could choose to be something like that to someone. Some reason why someone did not fall through the cracks or fall to that cliff. The reason why someone decided to hang in there. You could be that one reason. For these guys, it was the Lord Jesus. So today, if that person is dead, just pray for them. Or let someone in their family know what they did for you. But don't let this opportunity pass you by. Let them know how God used them to give you the life that you have right now, today. And then finally, um, you see what was going on here. When Jesus had explained everything, he had done, he has ended his pay, I would say, with these two guys. Because he has, he's explained everything. He had almost given them three years of education. In seven, maybe, I don't know how many hours it took them because it's a seven miles walk. It may have taken them some three miles, three hours making this walk. But he used about three hours to give them a three years education. And then when they got to the town, he gave the impression he was going on further. And the guy said, no, 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 please don't go. And don't forget, at this time, they didn't even know who this guy was. They thought this guy, I'm sure they were thinking. Who is this guy who never was with us? We don't recognize him from among us. And yet, he knows so much. But they wanted him to be part of their company. 
said, no, 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 please don't go. Come stay with us. Come stay with us. That's very powerful. That's very powerful. These were very good people, good guys. I hope that spoke to you too, because it spoke to me. It spoke to me that Jesus is willing to come and stay with me. He's willing to come and stay with you. If you can invite him like this guy, Steve. He says, please don't go. No, no, no. Come stay with me, God. I hope that you can invite the Lord Jesus to stay with you. Keep a chair in your dining. Keep a chair somewhere in your home for the Lord in your life. Because he wants to be part of that, that experience, part of that dinner, part of that lunch, part of that breakfast. He wants to be part of your life. I hope you can also invite him to be part of your life. My dear friends, as we go through the next days and weeks, I hope not months, but days and weeks, may the Lord Jesus help us to do this three things we just reflected on first that the Lord Jesus may help us to recognize how best to use whatever moments moments we consider failed moments failed visions failed dreams how he implant he plans for us to learn and to use them well and not make mistakes with them and secondly to recognize someone who is the reason I am still here you are still here doing what you do even though we were almost at the verge of making a catastrophic decision in our lives. But thanks to that person, God did not let us fall through the cracks or fall down that cliff. And finally, Jesus is waiting for that invitation to spend life and spend that moment of great pleasure with you. God loves you very much. The Lord be with you with your spirit let us today profess our, our faith and ask God to bless that faith I believe in God the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth of all things visible and invisible I believe in the one Lord Jesus Christ the only begotten Son of God born of the Father before all ages God from God light from light true God from true God begotten not made consubstantial with the Father through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. And rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Let us pray for our Holy Father, the Pope. Let us pray for our bishops, pray for our priests, pray for our deacons, pray for all members of God's Holy Family. That God who knows our every need may reach out at this time of great struggle to bless us with courage, to bless us with vision, to bless us with wisdom, to know what each opportunity or each challenge holds, the lessons, that he wants us to learn and how best to improve us by his grace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray, dear God, in loving thanks for the people that you have placed in our lives, especially at very critical moments of our lives, when we were at great risk, maybe to our own lives, to our safety, or the safety of our own future. Today, dear God, we want to take a moment and just say thank you to you. Thank you for sending them to us. Thank you for putting them in our lives. Thank you, dear God, for helping them be the light that we needed in that darkness to lead us back to you. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our patients.
patience. Pray for those who are sick at this time. Pray especially for people who, whose condition is very critical. Pray and ask that through the intercession of Padre Pio, the healing hands of God's blessings through him, that our brothers and sisters who are sick, those who are critically sick and ill at this time, they receive the power of God's grace for healing and recovery. We pray too for our healthcare workers. We pray and ask that God may bless their sacrifices and bless their care and ministry. We pray that God may protect them, and that God may protect and watch over their families. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for people we never often remember, but they are so essential to our public hygiene. They are so essential to our survival. They are so essential to how our societies function every day. And so we pray for our grocery workers. We pray for those who clean and clear our streets and our trash. We pray for all peoples who are doing some of these menial jobs and that are so essential for our security, for our hygiene, and for public safety. May God bless them. May God protect them at this time. May God reward them in every good way. And may God open our eyes as a people to recognize how, how, how wonderful their ministry and service is to us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for your intentions, the intentions that you brought here today to God. May God accept them like a fragrant offering. And in return, may God grant the blessings and the desires of your hearts as you have expressed. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those who have asked my prayers and your prayers, may God hear those cries from our hearts. May God hear those groanings from our hearts. May God accept them. And may God fill our hearts with joy and gladness. May God give us hope at a time of great despair. Dear God, may you grant your children all of this. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us ask our Blessed Mother's intercession as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen. In bread we bring you, Lord, our bodies labor. In wine we offer you, our spirits give. We do not ask you, Lord, who is my neighbor, but join you united now. One in belief, for oh, we have gladly heard your word, your holy word, and now in answer, Lord, our gifts we bring, our failing faith make whole, our failing hearts renew. Our lives belong to you, our Lord in thine. Blessed thy Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given, and human hands have made, which will become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed thy Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. Receive, O Lord, we pray, 
these offerings and the prayers of your exultant church. And as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with all the angels and saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we are clean. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread, giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. With the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one, by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Timothy our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph as spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have placed you throughout the ages, we may merit to be called heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray in the words our Lord gave us our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, 
Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always, and with your spirit. Dear friends, let us offer each other the sign of God's peace. And from me to you and your families, may the peace of God be with you. May the peace of God abide with you. May the peace of God rest in your home forever. Amen. Lamb of God, you will take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you will take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you will take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Look up, my sisters and brothers. Look up and behold the Lamb of God. Behold our Savior, Jesus Christ. Our bread of life, he takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to life everlasting. Amen. Most gracious God, your sons and daughters all around the world can only receive you at this time spiritually. And so I beg you, you the priest, you the lamb of sacrifice, you the altar. On this altar, may you the priest bring your body and your blood spiritually to every heart that yearns for you, to every heart that is open to receive you, to every heart that is asking for you. May your blessings and your presence renew the face of their hearts, their lives, and our world. Amen. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you have blessed, you are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries, may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. For we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before the final blessing, I'd like to take a moment to express my thanks to all of you for joining and participating in this Holy Eucharist. I pray that God, who is all merciful, all compassionate, and all present, may reach out and bless you according to your needs. As always, I'd like to end everything I do by reminding you, if you forget anything I said, don't forget this, that you are the delight of the Almighty God, and that God loves you very much. For our closing hymn, we will be singing, Lord, you have come to the seashore. The Lord be with you.
and with your spirit. Almighty God, bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, this Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, you have come to the seashore. Neither searching for the rich nor the wise, desiring only that I should follow. O oh Lord, with your eyes set upon me, gently smiling. You have spoken my name, all I long for, I have found by the water at your side, I will seek other shores. Lord, see my goods, my possessions. In my boat you find no power, no wealth. Will you accept then my nets and my labor? O oh Lord, with your eyes set upon me, gently smiling. You have spoken my name, all I long for, I have found by the water, at your side, I will seek all the shoes.